Hello friends, how are you? Fine. Okay, so now we come to the 8th lesson, CBSC class 11, that is uh, discovering touch. The saga continues. The saga continues. Now here you have got, before that we have already done, you remember all the five poems. Remember that? The Labyrinth of first one, second, the voice of the rain, third, a photograph, fourth, childhood, fifth, father to son. And now two cross lessons also we have done, that is uh, uh, the portrait of a lady, and uh, next one was, we are not afraid to die if we can all stay together. Now this is the eighth lesson, class 11, CBC. Okay, so what do you find, you know, you see this, it's like a cross, I have, a, I have drawn a cross also here, a cross. Looks like a cross, but the upper part is here, what a no, oval shape. You know what is this? This is an alphabet used by ancient Egyptians. They had got a system of writing called, here it is, hieroglyphs. 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 Alphabet. And this one, one of the alphabet. It is pronounced Ankh. Ankh. Ankh means life. Ankh. And you can see this Ankh. Tut. Tut Ankh. Then Amun. That was the full name of discovering Tut. That name. Tut. So Tut Ankh Amun. Amun, one of the major gods uh, that uh, the Egyptians believed. Mather means a god of gods. Just as you have got in Greece, uh, Greeks, they have got the god of god Zeus. Zeus is god of god. And the uh, Romans, they have Jupiter or Jove, god of god. They have many gods. So, god of god are king of gods, you can say. So, in this case, Amun, say major god. You can say about, uh, say, king of King of the gods, Amun. Just like is Zeus or Jupiter or Job for Romans and the Greeks. That is ancient. This is all ancient religion, ancient beliefs. So the meaning of Tut Ankh Amun means, means life. That is the living image of Amun. Tut Ankh Amun means living. Ankh means life. So you know, this Ankh means life, living. The living image of Amun. Amun means a major god, Egyptian god. So when you say Tut Ankh Amun, by uh, Tudor we say, how do you say that? We say, uh, discovering touch, that is the short form. Then together we say Tut Ankh Amun, Tut Ankh Amun, Tut Ankh Amun, Tut Ankh Amun. Tut Ank Amun means image of the living God. According to for the Egyptians, Amun was a living God. So image of the living God means life, living. Ank means living. I think now that is clear. Now Tut as such it means it is a way of expressing uh, exclamation. So, tut. Tut I am going to jump. Tut tut this tut. But that is not the meaning here. This must be the first name of that uh, person also. Otherwise meaning is the tut. Uh, word that is used to for, for expressing exclamations or interjection. Tut. Don't go there. This tut. What a wonder of this. So tut tan kamun. You got the meaning of tut tan kamun. So for short we say tut. Now but uh, the English meaning is, you cannot apply to truth here. English meaning is a word that expresses um, interjections or explanation. But here it is, of course, basic name of a person. Matthew, Matthew is a man. Thomas, Tom, like that. This is truth. Truth and the moon. So I think uh, we got the meaning of that word. Okay. okay. So he was the boy king, the young ruler. Okay. So Amun, a major god. Ankh, life. So this is the symbol, an alphabet of ancient Egyptian writing system called hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics, the system, alphabet system. 
and took a word that expresses interjections or exclamations. But that is the English meaning, but here it is not like that. In English, took means exclamation. But here it is an Egyptian word and the name of the place. Okay. Now, another thing that we should know is discovering touch the saga and the saga. Saga means a long story involving many incidents and so on. That is a saga means. It continues you now, even now. And the, the, here the story is the discovery of Tut's uh, tomb, then the excavations made by archaeologists, the first the British archaeologist, Howard Carter, then an anatomy professor, and then uh, some other people who came and uh, anatomy professor excavated it. Uh, Howard archaeologist, British archaeologist Howard Carter uh, recorded the treasures, funerary treasures. Means the Egyptians believed that they will, people have an afterlife. So for living after their death, they need many things now. Like uh, uh, everyday things and also gold and uh, then uh, or the dress and all those things. They used to, they used to uh, bury along with this, uh, uh, the, the dead body of a person. Because they believed that this, af after death there is life. So that, therefore, they thought for living they need, no? they guess while living we need a coffee, tea and so on. Just like uh, they thought that after death these people uh, the dead person, uh, he would like he would live, and for him, he had their, he has to meet his needs. For that they are, uh, they are burying along with the dead person, the dead body along with the dead body they are also bury treasures. And that is in Egypt it is probably it would be uh, say in, as we can say millions of rupees as we can say today in our world. Indian rupee can say worth millions of rupees. They used to bury along with the dead body. For dead body you cannot say mummy. I, I, I did not use the word mummy for now because I have to explain that to you. Let's see. So we can say mummy. Okay. Mummy means embalmed uh, uh, dead body. Embalmed. Embalmed. You know. So once upon a time embalming was done by using spices. So I'm logging. Now you have got the chemical treatments and so on. Embalming. So an embalmed dead body is a mummy. So they used to bury mummy along with the uh, along with the um, treasures. So funeral treasures. So Howard Carter, what he did was after excavations, years of excavation, uh, three thousand three hundred years ago, this. Uh, a young ruler, this Boyish king, Ted was buried. And after they forgot about it. Then 3,300 years ago, imagine. And then what happened that the people interested in um, is archaeologists, excavation and finding out the human past. Uh, with the help of the utensils used by them, the culture, artifacts of culture and so on, we can find out uh, the human past record the human past. So such people are called, uh, you remember Mohanjadaro and Harap and so on, archaeologists. So such persons are called archaeologists. So British archaeologist Howard Carter, uh, he discovered this in 1922. And then afterwards, a lot of uh, excavations were made and a lot of studies were made. First, Howard Carter's business was to Record the funeral treasures. He was interested in that. Then the an, an anatomy professor excavated the book. The, he made some uh, discoveries. Later on, most modern medical uh, tech, uh, medical uh, technology was used for this, like a CT scan and so. So that's the story. This way is a long story. But the saga continues. It continues even now. I will not, even after all this, they will not answer two questions. What are the questions? How, how did he die? And how old was he when he died? Boy, teenager. See that. That's the thing. I think this much is clear to you know, right? What is the meaning of this? What is this? Etc. Etc. And then what happened is that uh, you should also know background about the dynasty. Dynasty means a family, a line of kings. Family of kings. Yes, one after another, successors and so on. 
predecessors and successors, the family of kings, predecessors, including predecessors and successors. Yes. And uh, you can see, uh, King Tut Ang Atten, that was his first name. Before that, you see, the lineage or line, you can see, line of uh, the king's family, Amen Hotter the Third. He was Tut Ang Amon's father or grandfather, they say, years ago. Amen Hotter the Fourth. After the death of Amen Hotter of the Third, Amen Hotter of the Fourth took over. And what happened is that he changed his name to Akhenaten. Aten. Aten means sun disk. So actually he began as Amen Hotter. Then he changed his name to Akhenaten. Here, same thing. Ak. 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 Akhenaten. Akhenaten. That means he started worshipping the sun god and so he said I am the living image of sun see the traditional is living image of Amun but he changed it to Atta and not only that he did uh, uh, he committed many atrocities those things in detail we will see later otherwise we will get confused now and then after his death for a very short way another ruler came from somewhere we don't know Smenkari, Smenkari, very short period of time, and then comes King Tut Ang Aten, King Tut Ang Aten, that is because he changed his name Amenhot to Akhenaten, so he inherited this Aten. Soon the boy king changed his name and he called himself King Tut Ang Amun. So the first one is Amun, then second one is also Amun. The first one worshipped Amun, so the last one also worshipped Amun. So that is the lineage, just want to show you briefly, more of this we will see later. Okay, Ankh, the meaning and so on, I think everything has been explained to you. Alright, the most famous of the world's mummies. Now, before we end up the lesson, we must know something about the Egyptian way of thinking, the Egyptian way of worshipping, the Egyptian way of burying, the Egyptian way of mummifying a dead boy. Understand? When you think of Egypt, you know, what comes to your mind? First comes this Queen Cleopatra the Seventh. Then Queen Cleopatra. Queen Cleopatra. The seventh. Kings and queens. Egypt, they were called the pharaohs. Pharaoh. So this Cleopatra is also a pharaoh. Kings and queens. They are given this title pharaoh. So Queen Cleopatra the seventh was the last pharaoh. He died in 30 BC. That the rule of Pharaoh comes to an end. King Cle uh, Queen Cle Cleopatra is famous, you know, Shakespeare wrote, Shakespeare has written a, a great drama, Antony and Cleopatra. And Cleopatra, for some time, she was uh, with uh, Julius Caesar. And uh, she had a son from Julius Caesar. Later, after the death of Julius Caesar, she fell madly in love with Mark Antony. And that love story is uh, infinite variety and so on. You must probably made her come across those quotations. Uh, and uh, infinite variety of Leopard. Then what happened is that uh, she killed herself when she came to know that the Roman general Augustus Caesar is just impending the, the Roman general Augustus Caesar was about to conquer Egypt. She killed herself, not by a dagger, but with the asps, the 
not too very poisonous. That is the that, that the uh, most terrible thing to say. Poisonous snakes and put her hands inside the basket, and the snakes licked their hands, and she died. And the Romans came to catch to catch her alive. They found her lying dead. With that, the dynastic rule in Egypt comes to an end. This is what we mean. This it's a story. If you have time, definitely you must go through Antony and Cleopatra. Okay. Now the next thing to remember, what comes to your mind is pyramids. Remember now, huge structures like with the four faces. Angles you now, four angles you know, with four, four side angles. Very, what we said, and the pharaohs were the the well-known pharaoh, sorry, the pharaoh. second thing as I told you is but first is King Leopold, second is the huge structures you have seen. Pyramids of Egypt, one of the wonders of the world. Isn't it? Within the pyramid, there is the tomb of pharaohs. The well-known pharaoh, his tomb was discovered as I told you in 1922, that is uh, our Tut. Tut Ank Amun. Tutankhamun, that is. So understand. And then king and queens, I have already told you, they were known as pharaohs. And the Egyptians believed that these pharaohs were gods. And the citizens, they are, they are slaves. And it is their duty to work for the pharaohs. Irrespective of their character or standing or any such thing. And then the god of it is they believed that the god of the sky and they called the name was the name of the god of the sky was Horus. Horus with the face of a falcon and wings. So falcon's head and wings. They are the sky god. So people believe that they are the slaves and the pharaohs got power from the sky god. That is a horse and so for them it was of great satisfaction to work for these pharaohs because they have gods thought like. Pharaohs were buried in decorated tombs inside a pyramid. Pyramid is a huge structure, and inside the pyramid there is decorated tombs. It's just four faces. Told the pyramids are four faces, shaped like a like triangles. You might have seen this huge structures, isn't it? So within that, and the the great pyramid, or you can see the huge. Uh, huge or the biggest pyramid that is in Giza. Giza, the name of the name is Giza, a place called Giza. That is on the western bank of the Nile. Western Nile. And that is 138.8 meters tall. 138.8 meters tall. That means 450 feet. Pyramids, you can see. That is of King Kufu. King Kufu. King Kufu. That is the name of the king for whom it. In a pyramid, it took 20 years and so to build. But what happened is that there is no pyramid for troops. Why? He died without. He died very young. People never thought that he would die. But otherwise, what happened? The pharaohs will get old. By the time they reach some 60 or 70, they, are, they will start building their own pyramid. The agency, they, they are the people to oversee that. In this case, it was, that was unkindly. So, Tut had no pyramids. There's no pyramid for Tut. There is no time. Only uh, just nine years ago, nobody thought that he would die. 
So buried in the valley of the kings. It's not, there is no payment for him. Valley of the kings, there are many tombs. That is the reason why 3,300 years ago, Truth was very buried. And he was buried in the valley of kings without a, without a pyramid. So, and the people had forgotten all about it. Because he was the last man in that dynasty. Then, after this, they went on their work, went on with their work, excavations. Finally, in 1922, as I said, years after that, uh, Howard Carter discovered it. Because he was the violent king, like any other, with uh, many other uh, tombs. Understand? That's, that's why he was not noticed. If he had a pyramid like this, definitely there will be no problem. <coughs> Names extra will be on them. Now, Egyptians believed in afterlife. So what happens? They mummified the dead bodies. Mummification usually takes 70 days. What they do, you know? First, uh, mummification, something that we should know about, you know, before we get into this lesson. Hope you are getting some general knowledge. Okay. Mummifying the body takes about, takes about, uh, takes about 70 days. 40 plus 30. First 40 days, it is removing the moisture from the dead body. Understand? Moisture from the dead body. Uh, there is any element of water. And for that they used a kind of salt called the natron. Natron. That is the salt, name of the salt. It's a salt, a kind of salt. So I'll go to Nathan, 40 days. Then they removed internal organs except heart, like the intestine, stomach, liver, and then uh, lungs. And they put it in jars, different jars. Jar, J A R S. And those jars were called the canopy jars. Canopy. Canopy jars. So first the moisture removed by salt, then internal organs except heart. For, for something heart has to beat, you know. For the underworld they have to have travel to reach Osiris. Osiris is the god who controls afterlife. Every, they have Egyptians have gods for everything. See. There are gods for Adonis, Attic, and so on. They were the gods of fertility. And here, this is Osiris, the god of afterlife. After the death of a person, you bury him, mummify him, and bury him. Then, when the sun sets, this mummy will start moving, traveling. On the way, there will have many problems. So, they carry these things. A treasure ship. So that they can somehow manage to reach the reach Osiris. And then what happened? Then they will have a either a stone or they will have wooden uh, coffins. And those coffins were called the sarcophagus. 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 Coffin, this coffin, usually stone. This is jars in which this is salt. So, 70 days it takes. Now, after removing the moisture and removing the internal organs, what do they do now? They wrap the body with linen strips. Many times they wrap like this, linen strips. And the linen strip to stay together, they apply the resin. Resin means a kind of glue, you can say. Something like if I say, don't misunderstand me, tar, tar like substance maybe. But this must be very costly thing. <laughs> so such thing. Then the mummy was prepared, very kept in stone coffins or wooden coffins, 
and buried. Along with that are many treasures like gold, jewels, boy. In this case, board games, yes, boy. No. So board games and other things. Sir. So the belief is that the sun sets. His mummy will start moving. One the, and they also carry the very along with this and amulets. Amulets means certain charms. You know, you have seen some people tying a thread around there, or some people here if they will have something, you know, some charms like that. It's just got supernatural power. But they, have, they think that people who believe in charms, they think that this will be a protective protection. They will get protection from God. So the dead birds in mummies, along with the mummies, they also uh, put some amulets so that on their journey to Osiris, to the underworld, on someday they will find, they will come across many obstacles. So to save themselves from these obstacles, they 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 can use these amulets or as amulets, the small magical things. No, that is. So that's how they used to food, gold, money. Then uh, they, are, they have tools and even slaves. I don't know how they used to bury slaves also. Some of them believed like that. They, they want to help you now. On their journey from the tomb to Osiris, they need. See in the lesson you will find you now that the touch meeting Osiris. You know, sir. And the first victory that of touch, that Egyptian face and things like that. You know. The Egyptian mummy's face, or what you find is the, the touch face. So these are things that uh, uh, we should know about. And it is said that you know, <coughs> along with this mummy, they also bury a book of the dead, a scroll. And it is the it is a guide book. There is a the book of the dead. It is a guide book in which it is uh, clearly shown which is the path the mummy should take to reach the uh, god of afterlife, that is Osiris. Now if you know this much in the background, you know, then you will, you will enjoy this really touch, discovering touch, the saga continues. So several very important voice points I want to just tell you. Egyptians believed in afterlife. After the death of a person, they mummified. Mummifying took a period of 70 days and after uh, preparing this mummy, 40 days they are absorbing or the salt, they, they use a salt called natural and they will absorb all the, uh, the moisture in the body. Then inside organs they take and put in different jars called the canopic jars, canopic jars. Afterwards they they wrap the dead body with the linen strips or a paste like thing is applied on the linen strips. It's called the resin. So that it will be there, it will not, it will not be, it will hold the mummy tight. Everything like this. And afterwards they have got a, either stone or wooden. Uh, wooden means don't, don't think that the cheap wood or the very costly wood it must be. So with decorations and so on. So the burial, uh, sarcophagus, 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 that is the name of the coffin, how the coffin is known, and address they bury him along and there will be walls of the burial ground and then I will be painted, no? mural painting, mural, mu, M-U-R-A-L, mural. That's Latin word muris, M-U-R, means a wall. So mural paintings are there and there will be writings in hieroglyphics, writings you will find and then you have a, and especially the one I showed you, know, cross lighting above it there is oval shape. So that is, uh, that is one of the letters of the alphabet, uh, call that, uh, the meaning of that is life, life or living. And then what will you find is that they uh, kind of fish the and so on and uh, uh, place it. Along with that they take, they put everything, food, gold, money. Then they have got tools and slaves. Journey. There is also a book of the dead, a guide. And they can read it and then uh, that will guide, guiding them through the underworld. The journey starts 
at night means towards evening through night they will be traveling if they can't reach one night then they will take, again take rest during the day and continue their journey these are their beliefs and another point i told you is about cleopatra the last of the pharaohs king or queen they are given this name from the pharaohs were considered as gods they thought that the egyptians thought the god of horse the god of the sky with the face of a falcon you know that uh, they protect his people and with wings and there is another god god of afterlife they thoroughly believe they had absolutely no doubt that these people will live after death and that's why they along with uh, their uh, uh, in the in the uh, sarcophagus sarcophagus that is uh, in the in the coffin and the nearby places there are burial chambers there so within that burial chamber mural paintings and what this gold food the drink and the wine then the slaves and tools etc with amulets a m u l e t s amulets you know that is a kind of thing that will protect you from just but people believe that it has got uh, some uh, uh, supernatural powers so so amulets can see some people wear in that in our place also amulets you know, to protect them from uh, well, that is protect them from problems or obstacles or uh, and the the kind of you know uh, supernatural protection they are getting from some god we do not know which god it is you know that is this man took the youngest of them the most famous souls when they started uh, scanning him he was taken he was given the first chance with all the regal splendors he was taken out and then he was scanned the so first chance he was most famous mummy that's why we are studying now discovering that the saga continues it, it will continue because two of the major questions still remain unanswered how old was he how did he die this question still lingering questions we can say two major questions other thing is we can make records and so on that's it now this boy king could not be protected or buried inside a pyramid why because there was not time it takes 20 years 30 years 40 years for to build the pyramid and in this case what happened usually what will happen is old kings you know, then they will at 60 years so they will they okay, start building my pyramid and the king himself the pharaoh himself will go and then oversee the whole thing in this case just nine years ago he was a boy he never thought that he would die at that time so there was some time for building so he was buried in the valley of the kings the valley of the departed kings i hope this much background is enough for you, for us to get into the lesson okay so bye have a nice time enjoy your life hope that you enjoy my narration of the background that is uh, right from tut ank amun and tut tut ank atten how tut ank atten becomes tut ank amun is a interesting thing that we should know isn't it? when you are reading tut who is tut and so on. my dear friends i hope that you have enjoyed my narration and bye have a nice time at the same day remember these things mass prevents the killer distance physical distance prevents the killer cleanliness prevents the killer very very important healthy life prevents the killer healthy lifestyle and then prevention is better than cure bye have a nice day